The Westbrook Wildcats started the 2022 season with plenty of energy. They returned many pieces from their 2021 state championship team, including Cedric Ware, who was the offensive and defensive MVP of the Class 1A Division I title game. But this senior class knew 2022 would be tougher. We can't depend on last year. It's a whole brand new year. We got to start fresh and start over. The Wildcats may have snuck up on people last year, but now as the defending state champs, they were going to get everyone's best shot. We definitely have a target on our back and we'll have to live up to it. In Benjamin, the Mustangs were also expecting a lot. Every player was back from a team that won 10 games in 2021 and earned the school's first district title since 1978. But there was change to deal with. A new coach was brought in just days before practice started, and a superstar player moved in. Grayson Rigdon had already won a state title at Strawn and was named the Player of the Year, all as a freshman. I think they know what's on the line right now. You know, this is this is not one and done, but this is this is what these seniors, these kids from Benjamin that have been here, this is what they built their their, their you know they've had some rough years. They, they built it up to to, to what we're going to do this year, hopefully. The Holly Bearcats continued to mark off program firsts. In 2021, they played in their first ever state title game, but lost to perennial power Shiner. Coming into 2022, their goal was to get back and win. You know, we made it to the big stage. We didn't, we didn't win, you know, so that gives us something maybe to get a little motivation this year, you know. It's, We've been kind of building up to that, and we finally got there, so now we got to try to finish the job. And in Albany, Denny Faith was starting his 36th season as the Lions head coach. His team lost in the state semifinals in 2021. But with loads of talented players returning, Albany was ranked number one in the preseason poll, a first in the Faith era. Really feel bad about where our season ended last year, and, and we got a lot of those guys back that want to make sure that, that – uh, they're doing everything they can to get themselves back in that same spot. Westbrook stocked up on quality teams to play in non-district with three opponents ranked in the top 10. The Wildcats beat Jonesboro and then rallied to defeat Rankin by one. A four point loss to Garden City in week five dropped them from number one to number two in the state poll heading into district. The Benjamin Mustangs proved to be the class of six-man small school division. They mowed through the competition, outscoring their first four challengers, 298 to 12. Their toughest game came in the non-district finale against fifth-ranked Lorraine. Benjamin still came away with a 61 to 30 victory, but it was the first time they didn't end a game early by the 45-point mercy rule. The Holly Bearcats started the season with three straight Class 3A opponents. There was Jim Ned, which won state in 2020. Lubbock Roosevelt, which was coming off the best season in school history with a trip to the state semis. And Eastland, a traditional power. Led by a bruising rushing attack from Austin Cumpton. Touchdown Bearcats! An experienced passing game in a stingy and opportunistic defense. The Bearcats rolled past all three, leading to a week four matchup in Shackelford County against the Albany Lions. <laughs> Albany was 3-0 themselves, but several major players were injured, forcing a change at quarterback. Hawley's Cumpton rumbled for three touchdowns in the first half, building a 19-0 lead over Albany en route to a 26-14 win. The Lions lost the next week to a resurgent Comanche squad, putting Albany at 3-2 and, 
entering district play. But when the game started counting for playoff positioning, the Lions turned it into high gear. Even with QB Cole Chapman out for the first two district games, Albany secured lopsided wins. We fought through really good. It makes you bring out the depth of your whole team and shows you how when people are hurt and on the sidelines, we have more on the sideline that are going to step in and do their part. One falls down, there's always going to be more behind them to step up and do whatever it takes. In the third district game, the Lions traveled to play Roscoe, the team most people thought had the best shot at giving them a run for the championship. Instead, Albany torched the Plowboys in a 55-0 win. The Lions finished off an undefeated district championship with two more blowout victories over Hamlin and Abilene TLCA. Westbrook and Benjamin also cruised unbeaten through their districts, and Hawley remained unchallenged until week 11 when new rival Cisco came to town. They're coming for blood. They're, they're going to come to win. They want to go They want to go to state this year. So we're just going to have to do everything we can to stop them. Hawley and Cisco played each other in the playoffs in 2020 and 2021. Realignment put them in the same district this time. Their showdown to end the regular season was anticipated for months, and the game lived up to the hype. An overflow crowd saw both teams make big plays. Cisco's Hunter Long ran over and around Hawley's defense, gaining 225 yards on the ground. When Long went to the air, he found Carter Holton, Three times the pair of seniors hooked up for touchdowns. But Hawley QB Rody Hooper had weapons of his own, like Deontay Ramon and Chandlin Myers. The Bearcats trailed the entire game until the final drive. Hooper's pass to Will Scott with three seconds left gave Hawley the win and the district title. We kept our head up. We kept fighting and we kept fighting. And look what it got you. Sir. I'm, so, I'm so proud of y'all. It was the Bearcats' fifth straight district title. Now they shifted their attention to the playoffs, where they were six wins from a state championship. All in a row. Yeah. All in a row. Yeah. And we're on the six going in now. We got six more to go. Yes, hey, sir. I love you guys. Great Man, job. brother. Hey, All four teams breezed through the first two rounds of the playoffs. Westbrook got revenge on Garden City, the one team to beat them all season. In round three, the Albany Lions may have been the underdog to the 12-0 Wink Wildcats. But with four touchdowns from Cole Chapman on offense and two interceptions by London Fuentes on defense, Albany advanced to the regional final with a 35 to 18 win. We told them there's only eight teams left. Sometimes I don't know if they realize how close they are. So we had a little talk about how close you are to, you know, reaching the, the ultimate goal. Westbrook had another rematch in the playoffs. They squeaked by Rankin in September. But in November, the Wildcats earned a mercy rule win over the fourth ranked Red Devils to move on to the state semis. And Hawley continued to pour it on. The Bearcats scored at least 50 points for the third straight game, setting up a round four rematch with the Cisco Lobos. They're gonna give us everything that they have and. You know, hopefully we can give them everything we got. While the first game between Hawley and Cisco went down to the final seconds, this game was never in doubt. The Bearcat defense swallowed up Hunter Long, giving him no room to run. 
Brody Hooper was precise on his passes. And Austin Compton made his presence on offense and defense, intercepting this pass to squash any Cisco momentum. The final score of 40 to seven was surprising, not for who won, but by how much. When you're playing Cisco and you can beat them twice, it means a ton. You know, I feel like our kids came out and played about as close to a perfect game as we could. And, you know, I know we're gonna watch film and see a bunch of mistakes and stuff, but I, I really think they put their head down and played hard tonight. It was good to see. Benjamin continued to cruise past everyone with playoff scores of 56 to six, 56 nothing and 48 zip. The Mustangs beat Whit Harrell in the state semis 76 to 31, moving on to the state title game. Once again, Westbrook had to deal with a team trying to avenge an earlier loss. The Wildcats beat Happy in the state semis in 2021 and also in the opening game this year. Westbrook defeated Happy for the third time in a year, winning 40 to 30 and booking a return trip to the state championships in Arlington. Albany handled Collinsville in a shootout in the regional final and made the state semis for an incredible eighth time in the past 15 seasons. The only thing we want and anybody wants is that state championship and we're gonna do everything we can to make sure we get there, we get there the right way. If the Lions were the picture of tradition, their opponent, New Home, was the opposite. The Leopards had just moved from six man to 11 man five years ago. They surprised the state by beating powerhouse Wellington the week before to meet Albany at the Mustang Bowl in Sweetwater. But Albany showed tradition goes a long way. Adam Hill first ran through the Leopard defense, then decided to fly over them. Chapman's throw to Branson Beal put the Lions on top 14-0 just 10 minutes into the game. Newholm used a trick play to fool the Lions defense, scoring a few plays later, but seven points was as close as the Leopards would get all night. Albany ran away with a 53-25 win, sending the Lions to the state title game. Their coach, Denny Faith, had taken four teams to state before but never won it all. They've all been good. We need to finish. <laughs> that's sure. that's the bottom bottom line. We need to finish one. Obviously, you know, we, that's the reason you play the game is to get into this situation and have a chance to play for a state championship. Now we've got that chance. Our kids have earned that right, and uh, we just got through talking to them. You know, be happy with what we've done, but let's don't be satisfied. Let's go. Hey, let's go give this thing a shot. Holly came ready to work in their state semifinal against Crawford. The Bearcats leaned on their reliable running back. Austin Compton carried the ball 30 times and scored four touchdowns in the 34 to 20 victory. There's a couple of times where we just had to put our head down and go, you know. We, our, you kid, our kids were exhausted and, and, you know, they just kept fighting, kept fighting. The Class 1A Division II title game was an all-big country rematch between Lorraine and Benjamin. The first meeting was the Mustangs' closest game of the year, a 31-point win. The second meeting was not as competitive. Grayson Rigdon continued to be unstoppable, scoring seven total touchdowns for Benjamin. Lorraine led in the first quarter, but the Mustangs ended the half with three unanswered touchdowns including this 58-yard scoop and score by Brody White. It took Benjamin less than four minutes into the third quarter to score three more times and end the game by mercy rule. Benjamin had won its first state championship in school history. It's still surreal, but we, we expected nothing less. I mean, we set our goals and we had high expectations and we went out and we achieved them. The second six-man game was a number one versus number two battle, Abbott versus Westbrook. 
playing in their second state title game in a row. The Wildcats were unfazed by AT&T Stadium, jumping out to a 16-point lead. Cedric Ware took over in the second half, earning four rushing touchdowns. Parker Matlock's interception here set up Ware's final score of the day. And Bo Payne booted the two-point kick through to push Westbrook over the 45-point threshold. The Wildcats beat Abbott 69 to 24, becoming back-to-back -back state champions. Amazing, especially with this group, I wouldn't want to do it with anyone else. We bought into the weight program, just been grinding, and we got it done. Hawley squared off against South Texas power Refurio. The Bearcats started fast didn't let their foot off the gas. Compton was once again a star, scoring four times on the ground. The Bearcat defense bottled up Refurio's speedsters and forced four turnovers. All four times, the offense cashed in with touchdowns. Hawley led 28-0 before Refurio scored right before halftime and cruised to a 54-28 win taking home the state title for the first time in program history. To go out with the win your senior year, I mean, words can't even describe what it means, you know. It's a dream come true, and I, I couldn't thank all these guys enough. The Albany Lions were back at state, fighting to win their first championship since 1961. Just as they had almost every game, Albany scored first. This interception by London Fuentes led to a Coy Lefevre TD. But the game's turning point came with Lefevre on defense. In the second quarter, Lefevre leaped up and plucked a marked pass out of the air. Six plays later, Adam Hill ran 27 yards, putting the Lions on top by 14 at halftime. As the clock ticked down on Albany's 41-21 victory, their legendary coach, Denny Faith, could finally celebrate a state championship. This 2022 team has won a state championship, and they not only won it for themselves, they won it for a lot of other guys that have, that have sacrificed and done everything they could to get themselves in this kind of position and this group was able to just get over the top so just awesome awesome feeling